In this video, I'll show how to set up JDK, Eclipse, and uh, JavaFX on a Mac. Before we begin, uh, remember three things. Uh, they will save you lots of trouble. First of all, use OpenJDK from Adopt OpenJDK instead of uh, JDK from Oracle. Besides uh, all the licensing issues, uh, Oracle JDK also install lots of additional stuff, uh, while OpenJDK installer is much, uh, much cleaner. And uh, uh, secondly, use long-term support versions instead of the latest version. Uh, you don't really benefit much from the latest version. Uh, for our classes, you don't benefit at all, in fact. Uh, while well, long-term support versions are more stable and uh, uh, much better supported. And uh, last but not least, uh, always remove older versions before you install a new one. Lots of problems come from having multiple versions of the same uh, JDK on the same computer. Uh, if you want to see, want to know how to install, J uh, uh, remove existing JDK or Eclipse or JavaFX, check out this uninstallation section. So uh, first of all, uh, head over to adopopenjdk.net to download the latest version of long-term support version of OpenJDK, which is OpenJDK 11. And uh, I have already download it here. So it's a package file, just double click. And uh, it will show some instructions, just follow the instructions, click continue, agree, and uh, leave the installation location to default, and then install. And uh, that's pretty much it. And after that, it even asks you to move itself to trash. So very nice of it. And uh, we can open up a terminal and the type java-version. It shows that now we have OpenJDK version 11.0.8. So that's great. And then the next step, is to download Eclipse. And uh, here, Eclipse has a number of distributions. Depending on your class, you would want to have the Java developer version or enterprise Java developer version. Other than the, uh, the course CS3220, uh, the Java developer version would be fine. Uh, so download uh, the Mac version, Mac package, of course, and uh, I have already downloaded here. It's a, a DMG file, disk image file. So again, double click. So uh, in the open file, just drag Eclipse into applications. And uh, you can see it's copying and uh, so once that's done we can run Eclipse so I'll use the default location for workspace and uh, then we can create a project Okay, we'll create a project later. Let's have uh, JavaFX. So uh, download JavaFX from gluon.com and uh, you can pick either the latest version or the uh, version 11. Uh, I would, uh, I'll go for the version 11. Again, I like uh, long-term support version. And uh, it's already downloaded here. This one is a zip file. So just double click it and uh, it will uh, unzip to a local folder. So 
no need to do anything else just keep it there and uh, then we can create a java fx project and uh, this part is by far the most complex uh, fortunately there's good documentation for it so it has over to here and uh, the section you want to follow is java fx and eclipse and uh, inside um, there's one section called non-modular project using ide so follow the instructions here i have highlighted the main steps the first step is to create a user library in eclipse that includes all the java fx java files uh, this is a step that you only need to do once all the other steps needs to be done for each project but this one you only need to do it once so uh, go to eclipse preference and under java there's a something called build path expand it and here is user libraries user libraries is really just a, a group of java files that you you give it a name and uh, i'm going to call it javafx11 since mine is version 11 and then we can add extra uh, external external java files so the unzipped javafx is under my downloads folder javafx sdk and lib under lib there are a bunch of jar files select all the jar files okay that's all of them and open so this will add all of those jar files to this user library click apply and close so now we have our we have our user library and uh, we can then create a java project and uh, add this library to the project so we'll create a java project and it doesn't really matter project name i'll call it java fx hello and uh, so the first screen everything uh, can be left to default on the second screen we want to uncheck this one and uh, I think also here we can add our library so add library and select user library click this and click finish it's not adding for some reason let's try again this one and finish okay so now it's added and click finish again just to make sure that library is added yeah we can see it here great okay so now we need to have some code and i have already downloaded the sample code uh, from the documentation so that sample code if we open it up well uh let me want to use my confidential okay so <laughs> whatever that one is so um it it's in a package called hello fx so uh, let me first create that package first create a new package called hello fx and then let me copy over all the code and paste them here come on i'll just say always a lot okay so we have all the code here uh, then there's no compilation error, but uh, you won't be able to run it uh, as you'll see. Uh, uh, we need to run it once, run it as a Java application. 
and uh, we'll have an error that says runtime components are missing. Uh, what we do is we go to this uh, play button thing and go to run configurations. So when we run it for the first time, it will automatically create a run configuration that matches the name of the Java class. It's called main. Uh, you can change it to any name. You can change it for, for example, we can call it GFS, GFX hello. Uh, more importantly, we need to add a VM argument here or arguments and uh, that VM arguments will look like this. So we need to replace this part, the part that says pass to Java FX lib to the actual pass to the lib folder under the Java FX folder. So let's go to downloads and uh, my Java FX folder is here, the lib folder is here. So we can do a PW pwd which i think stands for print working directory this will give us the current path let's copy it over and paste it here okay so i think it's pasted my eyesight is failing so the fonts are very small well, we'll just apply and run it. If it runs, we know it's good. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot <laughs> the last step. Uh, I forgot one important step. If you forgot this step, uh, you'll see what uh, I just saw. The code seems to be running, but nothing is shown. Um, took, a, took me some Googling to figure out what's wrong. So uh, go back to run configuration and uh, go back to here and uh, notice that here there's a option that says use the dash x uh, blah blah blah. Uh, in any case that thing needs to be unchecked. And uh, now we see the window coming up. So that I think is it.